Hey, here we are in the classroom again with our on-campus course. On-campus course, say hello. Hi. Hi. All around, you probably can't see them in the cameras. Um, and this is our course staff, or at least not the film production staff, but our course staff for the on-campus course. This is Fran Cliff, Monica, who's our undergraduate research assistant and you've seen sometimes on camera. That's Adam, you've seen a lot of, of course, and Will, co-instructor. Today we have a special guest, Lee Kadeski, who is a graduate student at Cornell in food science. And he's going to tell us a little bit about what's standing here in front of us, and then we're going to have the course staff, since they're making all the money here, uh, be the guinea pigs on the taste test. So Lee. Hi, so uh, I work with bugs, um, and we create, me and my team, we created something called Sifu. And it's uh, basically something like tofu, but it's made entirely out of bugs. Um, so we work primarily with mealworms, um, which is what all of these products are made with. Uh, and we basically uh, have a process where, you, where we extract and restructure their proteins, um, and we form them into a block of tofu. And we can cut it, we can slice it, we can fry it, we can boil it, we can ferment it, um, and we can turn it into a bunch of different products um, and get all the great nutrition, all the great environmental benefits of raising and consuming insects, um, and none of the scariness and ickiness that people seem to associate with it. Um, so here we have uh, three products that we've been uh, developing out of Sifu. Uh, one's a Sifu pate that contains onions and mushrooms. Uh, the uh, Sifu mousse, which is uh, a passion fruit mousse dessert, it's like ice cream. Um, and some baked snacks we did uh, with, blended with some tapioca starch. They also contain onions. Um, you guys are gonna get, get a chance to try them. Uh, if you want to, if you don't, you won't hurt my feelings. Um, but they're good and nothing bad will happen to you if you try them, unless you have a shellfish allergy or you're allergic to any of the things I just mentioned. Um, so just be careful with that. Um, people who have shellfish allergies can present allergies to insects, and nobody gets tested for insect allergens. Um, so it, it can just be a challenge there. But uh, we'll invite you guys up to come and try it. You can. Well, so let's have, well, one we'll have our, our try first on camera and see how it goes. <laughs> I'll, I'll eat it with you if you want, whatever it is. Maybe describe the first thing and So bugs are green, they're really efficient, and they're really nutritious. So they got about as much protein as beef, uh, almost some species can have as much omega-3 as shrimp, and you're eating them in just about anything already. There's 250 aphids per grams of hops. Uh, there could be anywhere 1,200 uh, fragments of insects in a pinch of oregano. Uh, they're in citrus, they're in flour, you can't keep bugs out of things. They're all over chocolate. They're in everything you eat. There's big challenges ahead. We have a lot of work to do as humanity if we want to survive the next 100 years, or really if all of us want to survive the next 100 years. Um, we need every available solution, and I will, I, I do not, insects are not the only solution to global hunger, they're not the only solution to climate change, and they, they can't be the only solution. We need lots and lots and lots of things going together. Not everybody in this room is gonna eat a bug, and not everybody in this room wants to, and I don't wanna force everybody in this room to do it. We need every solution, every idea from every different field coming together if we're gonna actually do this. Um, and the good news is consumers have never been more willing or more conscious. There really has never been a better time to get people into bugs. Um, and we're really excited for what the future is gonna hold. So that, I just wanna acknowledge uh, my team uh, on Seafood Development, my brother Ellie, uh, Dan and Rachel, uh, who both have worked with us on Sifu. Um, my advisor, uh, Dr. Moraro, who's given me the time to come here and just work in the labs and things, and the whole Cornell Department of Food Science, um, who've just been really supportive. And uh, I welcome any questions. You can check our website out if you want to see what we're doing. We're on Twitter. And uh, if you have any questions or you want to chat, shoot me an email. We have some time for discussion if people want to ask some questions. Yep. So I've heard it said that uh, any plant food uh, sufficient calories provide sufficient protein. And even the, uh, the, the insects have a conversion ratio, you said, of like 1.7 to 2. So it seems to me the best thing to do is just to eat the plants. I, I don't disagree with you. Um, I just think it's never going to happen. I, I think we, I mean, for one, the, the, the first assertion, I mean, you can eat, you can live on rice. You simply won't live well. 
and you, you won't get a complete nutrient profile. You won't get a full, complete protein on just rice. Vegans do fine, and I know, I know a few healthy vegans. I, I, honestly, I don't know very many unhealthy vegans. I just don't know that many vegans. Um, <laughs> but, but I have vegan friends, and they're, they're great. Like they, they can run marathons. They can do all sorts of things. Um, and I, I wouldn't advocate against veganism. In the same way, I, honestly, I wouldn't advocate against eating meat. Um, I think there's lots of value to meat and lots of value to having different kinds of foods available. Um, and I think in, in the reality of where the world goes and what demand is pushing forward, um, there's, a lot, there's a lot of value to animal source foods that you simply can't get from plants and beyond just the value of, of the nutrition in them. I mean, there's, there's flavors, textures, there's things we like about eating meat and I just don't see that going away. Um, and I don't see why it has to. I mean, there are responsible ways to farm um, and there are responsible ways to use animals to make high quality food. So you talk about your process is like restructuring the proteins. Is there any way that process or like a similar type of like growing mealworms in your basement and then like coming upstairs and turning them into like a similar product? Like do you see that ever happening? Like you it, could have your own personal mealworm source in your house. Oh yeah, for sure. Um, we don't we don't raise them right now. Uh, you gotta keep them a little warm. Um, most of the farms you see are actually in the south um, or in California because the temperature is a little warmer. And because they're cold blooded. Um, they, you, can, you can raise them at cooler temperatures, they just don't grow nearly as fast. Um, so we, we don't farm mealworms, also our team is, is small, we just don't have the space and time to do it. Um, but we definitely see the potential there. And I mean, for me, what's one thing that's really exciting is just the, the opportunities for genetics with insects and what you could do uh, just to make them such an efficient livestock um, is, is just really exciting. To what extent can um, mealworm farming be expanded to developing nations in the world? Oh, I, I, easily. Um, I mean, it's especially in developing countries tend to have they tend to be more accepting of insect foods, um, and a, lot, a number of developing countries already. I mean, two billion people eat insects. A lot of those people are in developing countries. Um, mealworms. With that said, mealworms aren't the number one bug out there. Every culture sort of has its own. Um, but there are farming initiatives. There's a number of NGOs I know that are, are working on some farming initiatives in Africa. Uh, in Southeast Asia uh, to help develop local economies. Thailand is like the bug eating capital of the world. Um, and there's been huge pushes to get people into cricket farming there uh, as a way to develop supplementary income. So th there's definitely huge potential there. Um, it, it's, it, it's something that, that we definitely see that could happen. You can make a huge network as well. Um, and the scaling isn't, it, it's, not, it's not raising insects isn't exactly like raising cattle where you, you don't benefit from the same economies of scale. Um, you could. But even if you do it on a small scale in a number of different places, you can still appreciate a lot of the efficiencies. You kept talking about the seafood process, the process that you can perform on a lot of these different insects. I realize it's probably part of proprietary and a secret, but is there something you could say about is it grinding it up? Is it's it, it's like making tofu, uh, <laughs> just out of bugs, um, with some little little uh, yeah. Yeah, secret sauce. So can you say, what does that mean? It's just like making tofu? Uh, so it's, I mean, it's, it's basically you're, you're taking a, a big, you're taking a big mess of proteins and you're getting them to hold hands okay. into a big web. Um, you're making food gels. So you uh, do add some stuff to the insect. Yeah, it's, so seafood would be, you know, it's, it's 100% insect in the same way cheese is 100% milk. Okay. You know, um, it's 99.9. Yeah, so I was kind of interested in the idea that you need to raise them in warm places. So one thing that we've talked a little bit about in the class and some of the readings is that there's lots of land and places, in, especially in the US, where you can't really graze livestock there's not the right environment. It's really sunny, not a lot of water. It sounds like maybe the warm places would be great places to have giant mealworm farms. Yeah, absolutely. And that, that touches on your point as well. I mean, it's you know, like Sub-Saharan Africa, dry, arid environments where it's really tough to raise crops, great opportunity to raise, to raise insects. Um, you still need to feed them something. But the, there's, we have no shortage of food waste, is the truth of that, too. I mean, 40 to 50% of all the food we produce globally goes right into the trash. Um, processing food, I mean, also is, is a great opportunity. I mean, there, there's great, uh, I, I'm a big advocate for processed food, and I think it gets, it gets a very bad rap. Um, processing food just means you change it, you add value to it. Um, you know, we, people buy tofu and they don't buy soybeans. People buy cheese and they don't buy milk. Um, and in the same vein, I know people who love cheese but hate milk. Um, we see this as a product of people who love seafood but hate mealworms. Um, do you think the distribution of this would be more affordable than meat or more expensive because like, you have to do more 
more stuff to it, but then the bug rates, like, they are easier to it's, it, so. so it, I mean, it, it, it depends a lot. It's a really tough, it's a great question. It's a tough one to answer just because meat prices depend on so many things. Um, right now, it's tough to compete with meat. We, we see this as like, could be cheaper. It's really tough to compete with meat because meat is artificially cheap. Um, we don't factor in all of those environmental costs. And we also don't factor in just, I mean, all the subsidies that go into raising meat. I mean, all the subsidies that go to corn and soy, uh, that fatten up livestock, that true cost isn't captured. And you don't necessarily get it if you're not a beef producer. Um, so we, we can definitely produce this at a very low cost. Um, because they're efficient to raise, because you can feed them on waste, um, there's huge potential to bring the cost down. It might be challenging in the U.S., um, but that's to a large degree because the price of meat is artificially low. Um, how many uh, mealworms or insects are required in the amount of seafood that's sufficient for a meal? It's a good question. I actually didn't mention that. Um, so it takes about 10,000 mealworms to make a one to one and a half pound block of seafood. Um, we recover some byproducts out of that that also are high in protein. We recover everything out of those. We don't, we don't have any waste in our process. Um, we just, you don't necessarily get the same weight in as you get out just because water gets bound up in certain ways. Um, the number is about 10,000. So how big can that supply be replenished? Uh, 10,000 mealworms. I mean, it really depends on your farm. I, I, I don't know. We, we don't really do the farming. We, we go to a supplier for it. Uh, I can tell you they can't give me 20 pounds tomorrow. You know, it, it takes at least 60 days for a next generation to, to be born. It's about that for mealworms. Um, you gotta harvest them and everything. So, I mean, at, at the minimum, probably about 60 days, but pretty quick. It, it, quicker than you could raise a cow. Sure. Um, I was just wondering, this is, kind of seen as like a tofu supplement, since how it's being marketed, and like, you know, as you, as you started the entire beginning of the lecture, like, global demand is gonna be doubling in meat, and like, I personally, if I'm a meat eater, do not want to be my demand having met with like a tofu supplement. You know, like how do you get No, no, we, we get a lot of that. Um, that's just bad marketing on our part. Um, we had a bunch of press come out a little while ago, and I read through all the comments and never read internet comments about anything. Um, it was all faith in humanity. Um, but, uh, but a lot of it was like, oh, this is so stupid. Why would you make a tofu substitute out of animals? Why would vegetarians eat it? Um, it's, the honest truth is we came up with the name before we even, when we started this project, we did not think this was gonna work. We came up with the name before we even, before we even made it. Um, it. It's, none of us, we're, we're a very small team and none of us are marketers. So it's, it's an area that we definitely see uh, us needing to work in and definitely seeing some shifts in the name. We also found out, we went to Portugal a little while ago to present to the conference, um, found out that Sifu in French translates to, it's, it's roughly Sefu, that's crazy. Um, in, in Portuguese, it's roughly Sifudeo, which is, uh, that's effed up. Um, so so we're, we're seeing some challenges on the day. <laughs> so am I right that when we eat other animals, we have a process by which we take out the waste, the offal, you know, the sort of excrement products? Is that not happening in the case of the moment? No, so the, I mean, yeah. yeah, so for when you, when you slaughter a chicken yeah. um, or a fish, you gotta gut it, you take out gallbladder, all, all that sort of stuff. Um, with insects, uh, they're, they're batch. The, these, the insects need to be batch or continuous fermenters and, okay. and digesters. So um, mosquitoes are like us. They, they poop when they want to. Um, mealworms are continuous. Okay. So just everything's always going through their system. Um, so you can just flush them. So literally, like if you want to get all the waste out of them, you just, just flush them. Um, the other part of it too is, uh, I mean, a lot of the, the stuff in an insect is chitin. Um, it's basically, they, they wear their skeletons on the outside <coughs> and they make them out of chitin. Um, humans can digest chitin, we have chitinases. Um, you don't get a lot of nutrition from chitin because it's pretty much just hard cellulose. Um, but we can break it down uh, and, and get nutrition. Uh, Shakespeare taught us that we are all food for worms, but Lee, Kadeski, and <laughs> company are going to teach us that worms can be food for us first. <laughs>
flavor. flavor. It's kind of overwhelming. Yeah, I think. At this point, I think the one I tasted it earlier it tasted a lot like. I get the onion and mushroom, but I feel like it has more of the insect taste. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah I don't get any of that. Yeah, it's just completely fine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, completely <laughs> covered. Yeah. yeah, good texture too. Mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. Yeah, I would eat it. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> I really like the baked ones too. Like yeah. Just crackers. Yeah. <laughs>